This is the, the class web page um, that everything that you'll be doing is linked off of and was basically the printed out syllabus for the class that you got last class. All right, um, so in this section what we're going to cover is how to edit Apropedia. Apropedia is this open source wiki that's good for sustainability, appropriate technology, and poverty reduction. And this is the main page in Apropedia. First, I just want to kind of give you a, a short tour, tour. So after you've logged into Apropedia, uh, you'll see your username, your talk page, administrative links, preferences, watch lists, and contributions. Uh, your user page is the page, you can think of this as sort of like a professional LinkedIn resume type page. Uh, the talk page is how other people contact you on Apropedia unless you've put up, chosen to put up your email address. Now, I've put up my email address. I haven't seen you know, any kind of increase in spam. Google does a pretty good job of filtering it now. And so I would encourage you to do it, but I would definitely encourage you to put your email address within your preferences so that if somebody does, say, put a comment on your talk page, it sends you an email notifying you to, to look back on Apropedia. Uh, your watch list are articles that you are editing, usually, that you want to keep an eye on. Uh, you might also want to put the course website on your watch list page so that um, if, some, if an edit is made to it, it immediately goes to your watch list and you can see that there's been an update. And then finally, contributions are all of your currently edited pages, like what you've been working on yourself. Um, on every page in Apropedia that you've got the page, the discussion page for it, the edit page so that you can immediately begin editing that page, uh, the history of everybody that's done the, the edits before. And if you're an administrator like myself, uh, you'll be able to delete and move pages and change the protection for a page. So this is the front page of Apropedia, which you will not be able to, be able to edit. But if you want something there, you can let me know and I can get it on there for you. On the left-hand side, you have the sort of the main navigation menu, the collaboration, your collaborators, and then the areas of interest. And most of what we'll be doing in this class is sort of in the energy and the solar related areas. And what I'm going to cover today is sort of the help tab so you can see how to use it. Um, and there's all different kinds of information from, and there's all different classes from all over the world. This is from a, looks like a, a university in California that's making things that again fall, kind of fall under that appropriate technology um, sort of scale. And it looks like they're working on a lot of bike power, different types of projects. So if you click on the help page, you end up here. And it covers all the basics of editing either any kind of um, media wiki, wiki. Apropedia is one, Wikipedia is a good example of another one. And you edit a page simply by clicking the edit link. When you do that, any of the changes that you make are saved in the history page. And if you make a mistake, you can immediately go back. So if we look at the history of the page, we can see who the last couple people have been. And if for any reason, like this was, was done by an anonymous person from uh, some anonymous web address, if they made a mistake and I'm unhappy with it, I can immediately click undo and immediately wipe out that change. So if you make a mistake, if you accidentally hit save and you're not comfortable with it, all you have to do is click undo. So if we go back to the, uh, the main page, um, it is very simple to edit. You can either edit by clicking the tab at the top of any page, or you can click the hyperlink in any section of the page. The way that you create sections, and let's look for something. Uh, the example page. The easiest way to create a page, a new page in an Apropedia is either to do a search for it. So I can create a new page called example page um, to start off. And it's giving me a warning message and it's saying, are you sure you want to be here? Actually, it's logged me out in the time that I was talking. Um, and so now I don't have a warning page anymore. I'm logged back in as myself, and I'm creating a page called example page. And if I want to create those different sections so that other people can edit, I do that with equal signs. So I could call this, say, section one. And that's kind of a second level heading. I could go to section kind of 1.2. And as you're editing, you can look at the preview and see what you've done. So I have kind of have a top level heading. I could even go one more up. I'll call it a big section. And then you can look at what you're doing before you actually hit save. And so you can kind of create a hierarchy within your page itself uh, by using equal signs. Now, many of the things that you'll be doing, say in your lit search, uh, you'll be creating a list. And so you can either have a list with bullet points, and you can create bullet points with 
uh, Shift-8. Or you could have a numbered list, and the numbered list is done with numbered signs. So num1 and num2. And so again, if we go to the preview, we can see what we've done. And so bullets create a nice little handy bullet, put it all in order. Numbered list automatically numbers it for you, so you don't have to kind of lose where you are. Now let's say it, you want to um, draw attention to something on your page. You can do that by adding a box, and the way you do that is just to add a space before you start typing. So you would say, I don't know, something like, look at this. And I save the page, and immediately we've done a nice box around. So this is nice for, say, doing equations, uh, for bringing attention to safety things and your methods. Uh, for making it easier for people to navigate. And you'll notice that because we set up sections, uh, we have these nice little edit things for each one of them uh, within the page. So let's go back and edit the whole thing again. Um, when you are, say, talking to other people, so you're going to say, hi, Dr. Pierce, how are you? Um, and you want to leave me a message on, say, my talk page, you can use four tildes uh, to sign it. And what that gets you is your username is then shown there, uh, a link directly back to your talk page, and it time and date stamps it. And so this is very good. If you're having trouble and you need an administrator to help you, you might go to uh, the discussion tab, and you could create a new, a new discussion. So you can see lots and lots of discussion on all different kinds of topics. And if you want to go, let's say, all the way down to the bottom, people are talking about uh, media ideas and greenwashing and nitrogen-fixing bacteria. And this kind of thing, and if you want to add to that, uh, you can click edit, leave a message about it, and then immediately sign it, and then people will be able to go back to you and, and go to your talk page uh, and discuss that with you. Um, on Apropedia, it's often important to have internal links. So um, if you want to link back for, say, your methods page to your literature review, uh, you do internal links with square brackets. And so let's say we'll put an internal link to photovoltaics. We save the page again. And now it's a hyperlink. If we click on it, it takes us to the photovoltaic page. And you can see that photovoltaics is a very well developed uh, area of Apropedia. And we'll actually be using this site uh, for a little bit of what we do in kind of basic systems design. And so it kind of covers everything from the disadvantages, the advantages. It has other places that you can go to get information, government websites tied to everything. Lots and lots of people in the Apropedia community are part of solar. And this gives you a little bit of an idea on some of the topics that are covered um, within each of the idea, each of the concepts of, of solar energy and photovoltaics. Okay. You might also want to have a external link. So let's say that you're uh, trying to get something to us. Let me make sure that was right. Yes. So for external links, you only use a single bracket. And you can either have it go, if you just put it in a single bracket, it'll number them in the order of uh, kind of within the page. Uh, you can also make it so that it sees a different word. So if I want to say, you know, if you want to go to Michigan Tech, it's like that. And you can do the same thing with the internal links. So let's say that photovoltaics was too long and I wanted people just to see PV in my article. I put a pipe and then PV. And now it's showing PV and it's still hyperlinked back to the photovoltaics page. If you look down, I don't know if I can draw on this or not. Let's see. No, we can't. All right. So if you look down at the bottom of the page, let's save it. So as I put the, the mouse over PV, you can see at the bottom of the page, it's going to link to the photovoltaics page still. Um, let's see. Now, there's some more complicated things that you can do with a wiki. And so that was sort of the basic stuff. Um, some of the more complicated things that you can do involve creating tables. And so if we look, say, at this external link table, you can see how they did it. They Say they're setting up a class wiki table that it's going to float to the right and it's going to have a, a margin. And then you begin the table with exclamation points. You have a pipe break that begins your next uh, row within the table. And then you put your, your links for the first column, second column, and third column. And it will take you 
a few minutes of going back and forth before you understand how to do something like this. And if you're doing a small table, it's easiest just to hand code it. If you're doing a very large table, let's say that you're comparing, uh, one of you is looking at all the different photovoltaic modules, and you want to have all the different photovoltaic modules in a large, big kind of database table, it's much easier to write that in OpenOffice. Export it, export it as wiki markup and then paste that wiki markup into Apropedia and then it'll all automatically be formatted perfectly for you. Then if you need to go back and change one or two things, it's, it's not too bad to edit, but it is much easier to do it that way than to, to kind of hard code it all the way through. Um, you can add images to Apropedia and that's quite easy. If you go to upload a file, you simply choose your file uh, this is all the files that are supported now. Most of the image types of files, PowerPoint presentations, MP3 files, PDFs, uh, all the open office type documents, and for those of you working on 3D printed related solar powered stuff, the STLs and SCAD files, so the open source CAD packages. Uh, it'll automatically, if you, once you choose the file, it'll choose the file name. You can leave a, a summary. Now, you, this is the one thing you have to be very careful with. This, the entire Apropedia site is following go to a random page. Oops. It's following a Creative Commons by share alike license. And what that means is that you can only put up non-copyrighted stuff here. It's all got to be open source. It's all got to be creative. Now, if you wrote it yourself and you put it there, it's allowed. If you made an image or a diagram yourself, it's allowed. But what you can't do, say if you're talking about your method section and you're borrowing something from someone else's paper, you can't put their image in your page. It's got to be things that you create or things that you have um, a license for to put under this license. And so the buy means that if someone wants to use your page or, or information from it, they have to give you credit. They have to say, John Smith made this. And the share, SA stands for share alike. And what that means is that you can't, for instance, download stuff here and lock it away and not allow anybody else to see it again. If you make a change to it, you're expected to either put it back up on Apropedia itself or in some other venue that's completely shared. And so that's the default license for Wikipedia, but you have a whole slew of different licenses. A public domain stuff, if you end up working for the government and what you're doing is all automatically in the public domain, you can put it there. This is the uh, Creative Commons Attribution Share Lite default license from Apropedia. You can use the, the GNU licenses uh, for the general public license, which is usually more related to software, uh, but it can also be kind of put on for images. Uh, Apropedia Foundation images that are kind of owned by the foundation that's, that runs Apropedia, and then fair use images. So let's say you want to show a textbook picture or something on your, your list in your lit review. Uh, if you take a small one, you know, you're not hurting the publisher by saying, go read this book and here's a picture of it. So you can, just kind of, you can use that. Uh, if you want to watch the file to make sure nobody else messes with it, you just click there, and you can ignore all the warnings about it if, if they say, you know, that the file is too big. Now, in general, this is very nice. And once you upload an image, the image will have a name associated with it, and I'll show you in a second how you can put that into your um, own page. And you can also put in videos. Now, the way that I recommend putting in videos, and so for some of the projects like the Heliostat project, it, might be interesting to actually have a, a video of it working. Uh, you upload it onto uh, YouTube, and then the YouTube will give you this nice little, every, basically everything that follows after the V equals sign before you hit uh, an ampersand is the address of the video. And so you take that address and you put it in this code. So anything within kind of these double uh, squirrely brackets is pushing you to a template. And a template is something that you use within Apropedia in order to avoid a lot of typing. And so this widget for YouTube is a lot of code, and you don't want to have to write that code every time you want to put in a video. And so that's been shortened to this little widget to put in YouTube. You put the ID of your video and you, uh, paste this directly from YouTube there, and then it will show a video like this, which is both playable within the browser, or you can link back to YouTube so that somebody can watch it there if they would like to. Uh, Apropedia also supports Vimeo, so if you like that site and use those videos, you can um, put those on your pages as well. Okay. So I think we covered everything in tables um, and files. Uh, the files don't necessarily have to be images. So let's say you did a spreadsheet, you can upload that and, and refer people directly to it. Uh, when you input your images, 
Because you're linking to something internally, you're using the double square brackets again, uh, image, colon, and then the name of your image file, and you get the image. If you want to make a thumbnail, uh, you put a pipe and the word thumb, and that makes a thumbnail. And if you want to label a figure, you put a pipe after thumb, and then you can have you know, something like this, where you're labeling a figure as you're doing it. This is particularly helpful if in your methods you are designing something, and you're trying to explain to people how to, to build it. And so you can basically set this up as kind of a step-by-step -step visual process with the, uh, the text as well, so that other people can use it. Uh, we covered how to put in videos. Uh, at the bottom of every page, uh, you also want to put the categories of the things that your page refers to. So the categories for this class will almost certainly be the category for the class. It will also be photovoltaics or solar or the more specific kind of maybe PV systems or something like that that covers what you're doing. Uh, for those of you designing something, I'd also like you to get used to doing Apropedia status tags. So if you're designing something, and remember this is being looked at from all over the world, you don't want people, particularly if they're poor, spending months of their salary on something that you just tried and haven't really vetted yet. Like if you're at the prototype stage, you want to let everybody know that it's the prototype stage and it's not ready for prime time. And so you do that with a status tag. And basically the way that it works is kind of, if it's red or yellow, you're telling everybody to just move off. And the kind of the hierarchy of the status tags are design, model, prototype, verified, and deployed. So designed just means that it was your idea. You sketched it up. You wrote a little bit of code for it. You're not in any way certain that it will work. And so you tell everybody with a big red button that this has been designed, but you should probably not touch it um, unless you know someone else is doing research on it. A model means like maybe you design an electric circuit, and you've modeled it in MATLAB or something, but you're not sure that it works. You're pretty sure. And that, so you're giving an orange thing to say, you know, you might want to invest in, say, building my circuit, but you don't know yet for certain. Uh, if you build a prototype and it works, uh, now it's starting to get into the, the area where people that aren't as risk averse might consider actually using it. And so you give it a yellow status tag. Um, if we've done a study on it, and for all of everything you're doing in this class, you will do a study. And so then we can say that it's been verified and it will be verified by, say, Michigan Tech, um, that, you know, we've built this, designed it, built it, prototyped it, tested it, and we know for sure that, for instance, if we're having a solar-powered recycle bot, if you follow our instructions, plug it in, it's, go it's going to work. And then finally, uh, the sort of the dark green one, and this is one that's ready basically to be spread all over the world, says that it's been deployed. And this might be deployed by a business, it might be deployed by a nonprofit. Um, if you're in um, you know, Engineers Without Borders or something, it might be from, from that group, or you're taking your technology and putting it out in many places. And basically everything on this website with a dark green uh, status tag means that you, know, you could comfortably build one or, or buy one and, and know that it was going to work. Um, so this is, you have kind of a status back box top, status back box bottom that are all under these kind of squirrely brackets that take you to a template and then templates for each one of these. And so you would put the appropriate status for your page on your page as you're doing it. Uh, Apropedia Fox, I'll talk about in a minute. If you use Firefox, I strongly recommend that you use this software. It was actually developed in our group and it makes editing much easier and I'll, I'll show you at the end uh, how that kind of all comes together. But first I want to give you some examples of wh what I expect from you. So as a proof that you understand how to edit Apropedia, I want all of you uh, before next class to create an account, which you remember you just do by uh, clicking a link in the upper right-hand corner of any page. And then I want you to set up your user page. So this is my user page, and I've been a user for a while, so it's much more complicated than a normal person's. But um, it basically has all the features. So it has links to uh, publications that, that we've written. It has all of my personal links. And I think after you start using this for a while, you'll find that it's very, very handy. You can click on it from any browser, anywhere in the world, any time that you're traveling. You don't have to be on your own computer. You don't even have to log in to be able to change things. And it's very easy to keep track. Like I can make sure that nobody messes with my own page. And so uh, my, basically my entire web presence is centered on Apropedia because it's the easiest to use. Uh, there's also a user box section. And so hopefully every, all of you would be in this user box at the very least by the end of this class to say that I'm a user on Apropedia that knows something about photovoltaics. And if you're uh, you know, if you have a question about photovoltaics, you can talk to me, and you can see that the 
the kind of the hardcore members uh, in photovoltaics, there's 41 people in the field on this on these pages at any given time. And that doesn't include the people that, you know, sort of aren't regular Apropedia users. Like they might just read it or they might uh, just make a comment here and there, but they don't show, sort of do all their research on it. Um, hopefully all of you will have projects that you can show off on your pages. And as at, toward the end of the semester, you'll at least have one uh, that you can talk about. And then if you go down all the way to the bottom, um, go back to our class page, And you can see that we have a template here that basically tells people not to mess with the pages. And if you look at the, the source code for the class, it's this. So if you put that code at the top of your page, the ones that you're editing, uh, particularly your project page, if you don't want other people to muck around with it until you have it done, uh, put that up on, on top of it. Uh, you can also put a, a separate comment that says, you know, please be more than happy to have you say help with the literature review as I'm, I'm making it. Um, but you can you can add that to it. And so this lets everybody know that this is a class project that it's not quite done yet and it might not be ready for showtime. Um, and if you go all the way down to any of the bottom of the page, you get all the different categories um, that the particular user or that page is in. So uh, to get an idea, actually this will be a nice, you can see how to make tables um, from the research group page. And this is the big table up front. But then if you go down here, you can see that the project pages look like this. And we'll just take this one up here so you can see what it actually looks like. Uh, to make a nice little table like this where you have an image and a hyperlink, if you look at what it is, uh, we've set it up as a gallery template uh, saying the size of it and what the title of it's going to be. And then all you, all you do is put the image colon, the name of the image, and then double square brackets after a pipe to the hyperlink of your particular page. And so this is once you establish multiple projects for yourself in the Apropedia environment, this is a great way to keep track of it. Very easy, very, I think, intuitive for people to use. Uh, this is uh, Jafias's user page. And this is a, a, a student in my group and gives you a little bit better feel for what I'm sort of expecting from you as part of this class, where you have a, an image, you were able to upload an image, uh, hyperlink, say, back to the, your department, um, do a little bit of description about yourself, and you should treat this as a, as a professional page. There's a very good chance that after you start this and put your name up on Apropedia, if you Google yourself in a week, this will probably be the first page that comes up. And so you want to make it look good, you want to treat it like you would a professional kind of intro page, like a LinkedIn page, where you're saying what your skills are, you're saying maybe what your academic background is, um, the type of job that you're looking for. You can add in user boxes for the kind of things that you do, um, your research interest, what you're working on now, uh, the different projects that you're a part of. And if you, as you start to have publications, uh, you can link them up there with instead of the name, the full thing, and then a link to the actual um, paper, journal, article, or whatever you've done. Um, he has a list of pages that he manages, and I recommend that you do that as well on your user page, just so you can keep track of everything. You might forget you know, how you spelled a particular page. You know, did you make it a capital P or a lowercase p? Um, and so it's, that makes it a little bit better. And then you can put up an image gallery of like different projects that you've worked on um, in the past. These pages, as you know, we talked about before, get enormous amounts of traffic. And you can also link to, what I wanted to, you to show here, is how to link to non-image documents. So if we go in here, um, this is a Excel spreadsheet. And so rather than say image, you put media and then the name of the file that you uploaded. And if it looks messy, you can kind of clean it up with a pipe. And so as you're uploading simulation code, as you're uploading spreadsheets and that kind of thing, this is how you do it. Um, and this is another example of how you would do, say, an image. And so it's an image, pvsec.jpg, uh, and it's put on the right. And if we go back, you can see how that's set up. Um, and this is another example of a page where we've sh kind of shown the most important results from it um, so that people that don't necessarily have access to it can look at it. And this one, we've also put a direct link to the open access version of the article 
which is not you know, as nicely typeset as what you'd see published, but it has all the key equations and everything in that other people could use. And then the last thing that I wanted to, to end with is how to use Apopedia, the Apopedia Fox. And this is essentially a plugin. It's free and open source uh, for anybody that's using Firefox. And it makes editing Apopedia much, much easier. It has five sort of main things that it does for you. It allows you to add categories, upload images, use templates, put in status boxes, and tag things with maps. And so I'll show you kind of how to do each one. For the category page, um, you yourself can hard code what the categories are for your, your paper anytime that you want. But it's much easier. Let's say that I wanted to add things to my groups category. And the group is called uh, MOST. If I click on it, so the first category tab in Apopedia Fox you click on, and then you click on the category that you want to add, and it automatically puts the code for that category in the clipboard. You go over to the edit, hit edit, and paste that code into the page. And so this allows you to quickly add every single category that your um, type of project is in onto the, the, um, your page as you're editing it so that other people can find it when they're looking Oftentimes, people will s go through Apropedia based on browsing. And so if they didn't do a search for your specific keyword, they're going to browse to it, and they're going to get to it because you put it in the right category. Um, let's say you're doing something like a detailed description of how of your method, and it has lots and lots of images in it. And you get tired from going back and forth to the Upload button, which is in the bottom left-hand corner, and switching back and forth between tabs. It's much easier to split your screen, go to the Upload tab in Apopedia Fox, and then you can upload your picture, choose the licenses, put in your summary, everything the way you would normally, hit Upload. It'll tell you when it's uploaded, and you can take the destination file name and paste it right back into like, where you want it in your document. And so this allows you to do many images all at once um, in a much, much shorter amount of time. Uh, all the templates are automatically uh, loaded up when you kind of open up a PDF box the first time. And the, the templates, like this one here for our research group, is made up by a, a code snippet that you don't want to be putting in every time. And so the way that you get to that code is just that double squarely bracket MOST. And we have one for the class. You might create one for yourself. You might create one for your project if it gets really complicated. Like some of you that are working in teams might have multiple pages that are all going to be interlinking back and forth, and so you can put that all together kind of in one go and then uh, get access to the template. Uh, we talked about the, the status boxes before, and rather than hard coding in them and remembering what they're called, uh, you can just click on the status tab and then choose the, the status of your particular project. It'll again put it in the clipboard, you paste it into the edit box, and you're off to the races. And then the last thing is the map. So for those of you doing projects where you're looking at a specific geographical area, and say doing solar simulations for solar photovoltaic farms there, um, you can open up the map thing, use the arrow, or open up the map tab in Apopedia Fox, use the arrows to navigate to exactly where you are, zoom in, zoom out for say a specific solar farm, or maybe you're looking at all of a state or all of a nation, and um, put a marker there and talk about like, you know, this would be an ideal location for a solar farm for example. And then all that code will again be put on the clipboard and you can paste it into your um, project page. And you've just made a professional looking Google map of your uh, particular project or at least the site location for it um, in a few seconds. And so you won't have to actually go in and try to hard code any of this stuff. And so that is how to use Apopedia. Uh, if you want more information, remember you can always go directly to the help page on Apopedia. And if this isn't good enough for you, this is sort of like gets you to a medium level user. If you want to get really crazy, uh, then you can go to the help pages in, uh, in Wikipedia. And there's, there's more things that you can do. You can start to actually kind of build code into the pages. But I think for the purposes of this class and your projects, this is, should be more than enough to get you started. So we go back to our course page. You notice, just like all the other pages on Apopedia, it's editable. And all of the readings and everything for the class are below the schedule. So uh, today, we covered open source research and how to use it. Uh, your proposals were all due. And everybody that got an email back from me, your proposal was accepted. Um, some of you had to, to change them, and some weren't accepted. 
And next class, we'll cover how to do a literature review, how to use Zotero, and Materials 1. And Materials 1 is this, or sorry. Materials 1 is this information. And so you should read this article as background. Um, this article is why solar is important overall. And then the basic of um, sort of materials and crystal structures for photovoltaic devices for next class. And for next class, your user page is due. And so what that means is you click in the upper right-hand corner on any Apropedia page, create an account, and your account name, you know, if you call yourself John Smith, will be in red. If you click on that red John Smith, it'll immediately open up an editable page. You edit that page, and you're ready to go. Okay. So if we could turn off the audio and video for a second, and then we can discuss as a class privately.